fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? blazed in northern Texas with the Lone Ranger fighting on the side of the law against the notorious Red River Gang. The gang was smashed and all but three of the outlaws captured. The leader, Baldy Burley, and two of his henchmen escaped. After the trial and conviction of the prisoners, three men met in the big ranch house on the Bar M spread. The owner, a white-haired man known as Pop Madison, wore a grim expression as he talked to two of his foremen. Boys, as far as the Red River gang is concerned, we're through. What are your plans from now on, Baldy? What you call me, Jake? Oh, I, I meant to say Mr. Madison. Well, don't make another slip like that. You and Steve have got to forget you ever heard of Baldy Burley. It was just a mistake. Mistakes can be mighty costly. Like the one that tipped off the Lone Ranger where to ambush the boys. Well, you can't blame me for that. I'm not. I'm just saying that I'll not tolerate any more mistakes. Remember that, Jake. I'm not the only one. What's that you said? You made a couple of mistakes yourself, boss. For instance, the time you walked out of the house without your wig. I did that just once. That would have been once too often if one of the other men around the ranch happened to see you. you. Oh, what's you arguing? We'll be careful from now on, boys. <laughs> well, you'd better be. Just remember, if the law gets me, you'll both be exposed as the go-betweens. If I hang, you'll hang with yeah, me. Yeah, we know that, boys. What are we going to do now that the gang's broken up? Sit tight. I'll go on running the ranch. You boys go on as foreman. We well, large, you going to start a new gang? Not right away. Do you mean that Steve and I are to work for the pay of foreman? That won't hurt you. Each got a cut of all the jobs we did. You've got money put aside. That's for past work. I'm talking about the future. Yeah, maybe I'll start up a new gang someday. Someday? <laughs> we'll have to go on our own unless we can make some real money. All right. I'll give you two a chance to earn real money. How? Uh, square things for the boys who are slated to hang. What do you mean? Get the Lone Ranger in Tonto. Oh, so that's it. You mean kill him? Yeah. For how much? A thousand dollars for Tonto and five thousand for the Lone Ranger. If you do it right. Do it right? What do you mean by that? All right, I'll tell you. If the Lone Ranger is murdered, there'll be a hullabaloo that'll be heard from here to both coasts. Every law dog in the country will be hunting the killers. Yeah. Right? There'll be sheriffs, marshals, federal men, and bloodhounds. No matter how careful you are, you might leave a clue or track that could be run down. So I don't want it to look like a murder. You're asking us to take a mighty big risk for a measly $5,000. There'll be no risk at all if the Lone Ranger's death looks like an accident. Uh, that makes sense. How do we make it look like an accident, boss? Uh, I haven't decided. I have to think it over. First of all, you've got to locate the Lone Ranger. If you find him, let me know. By that time, I'll have the details of a plan worked out.
During the months that followed, the Lone Ranger and Tonto traveled many miles, but learned nothing that would lead them to the hideout of the leader of the Red River Gang. Finally, they returned to northern Texas and camped in a woods. Tonto rode into the nearby town of Tebbetsville for supplies. And as he tied his horse in front of the store, he hadn't the slightest suspicion that Baldy Burley's two henchmen sat in a cafe across the street. Steve, do you know how long the boss figures on staying in town? Well, he didn't say. But I'll expect uh, he'll be ready to go back to the ranch as soon as he's finished his business in the bag. Uh, he'll meet us here in the cafe. Has he, uh, has he said anything to you about organizing a new gang? No. I wish he'd get going. I'm fed up working for ranch wages. So am I. I told him so. What'd he say? No, not much. He gave me that cold-eyed look of his and told me to find the Lone Ranger if I wanted some easy money. I'll find the Lone Ranger. Be easier to find a flying buffalo or a talking horse. If I don't get some big money hey, soon, Jake. I'll... Boss just came in. Uh, he looks excited about something. Hey, Jake. Steve. Yeah, yeah. Here's the chair, boss. I have news for you, too. Look through the front window. All I see is the street, same as usual. Do you see the paint horse in front of the store across the street? Yeah, what about it? The owner of that horse is in the store. He's an Indian named Tonto. Hey, you mean the Lone Ranger's pal? The same. Are you sure, boss? I ought to know. I've seen him plenty of times. Then the mask man must be nearby. I bet we can find him by following Tonto. Then what do you do? Shoot it out with well, him? We'd figured... capture him. Ah, you two wouldn't have a chance of capturing him. And if you shot it out and got him, you'd have a murder manhunt started. That's the thing we've got to avoid. As I told you before, the death of the Lone Ranger and Tonto must look like accidents. Well, you told us you had a plan worked out. I have. Let's hear it. Follow Tonto openly when he leaves town like you're going in the same direction. When you're sure no one's nearby, close in and capture him. Take him to that old abandoned shack at the foot of Grey Mountain. It's a mighty desolate place. Yeah, it's a dangerous place. A landslide would probably crush the cabin and kill anyone who happened to be sleeping there. There was a landslide on Grey Mountain a couple of years ago. That's why no one's used the cabin since the old prospector who built it moved away. The slide you refer to just missed the cabin. I'm sure you men could start a slide that would not miss. I savvy. And if the Lone Ranger and Tonto happened to be in the cabin, well, who'd know that they were killed by a rock before the landslide? <laughs> no one. <laughs> hey, that's a slick plan. Yeah. Just one question, boss. There'll be no problem getting Tonto there. But uh, what about the Lone Ranger? He'll go there of his own accord. Here's how you'll work it. A short time later, Tonto left town with his saddlebags bulging. He had ridden less than a mile on his way back to the Lone Ranger's camp when he heard horses overtaking him. He looked back and saw two men, one of whom raised a hand and shouted, Danger! Wait a minute! You forgot something! Oscar, go fella. Tonto saw no reason to be suspicious of the strangers. Halting his horse, he waited as Jake and Steve approached and drew rein, one on each side of Scout. Oh, 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 oh. You say me forget something? That's what I said. Is your name Tondo? Not right. And we got business with you. Heist your hands. Huh? What this mean? This holdup? It's no holdup. Clubbed on the back of the head by Steve's gun barrel, Tonto lost consciousness and fell to the ground. Steady. Yeah, keep him covered, Jake, while I make sure I knocked him out. Better take his gun. Right. Yeah, he's out cold. Steady, boy. After the crack you gave him, it's a wonder he's alive. Hand me that rope while time. Then we'll heist him aboard his horse and get going to the shack at Grey Mountain. Tonto, this is going to be your last ride. Too bad you're not awake to appreciate it. In his woodland camp, the Lone Ranger became increasingly uneasy as the afternoon waned and Tonto did not return. He waited until nearly sunset, then saddled his horse with the intention of going in search of his Indian friend. He was about to mount the great horse, Silver, when he heard approaching hoofbeats. Silver, that may be Tonto now. Sounds like Scout. Wonder why he's winning like that. Easy, Scout. Whoa, fellow. Whoa! 
Easy. Scout, where's Taro? Scout pawed the ground and whinnied as if trying to tell the masked man that Tonto was in danger. I understand, Scout. Silver, now I'll follow your back trail. Easy, steady, big fellow. Come on, Scout. Come on, Hilly! We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. <laughs> to continue. While twilight deepened into darkness and a half moon rose above the horizon, Scout maintained a steady pace in a direction away from town and toward a range of mountains. And the masked man followed on Silver. Come on, Silver! <laughs> Meanwhile, Tonto lay bound and gagged inside the shack near the base of Gray Mountain. Some distance in front of the flimsy building, Jake and Steve sat on the ground, close to a thick stand of brushwood, waiting for the Lone Ranger to ride into the death trap. After a long period of silence, Jake said, Steve, it's been a long time since we turned that paint horse loose. Yeah, what about it? I'm wondering if Baldy had things figured wrong. You mean when he said the Indian's horse would go to the Lone Ranger and the Lone Ranger would follow it back here? Yeah. Well, the paint horse left here like he knew where he was going. Eh, just the same. Hey, I Jake, wa- I hear hoof beach. So do I. Maybe you thought of I look past the brush and see who's coming. Be careful. Don't show yourself. Hey, Jake. I think it's a paint horse. There's another horse behind it with a man riding. That must be the Lone Ranger. There's no reason for anyone else to come here. Is the man masked? I can't tell yet. But his horse seems to be white. Now I can see the paint horse. That man is masked. Get your head back. Don't let him see you. Yeah, move over, Jake. Get around the far side of this brushwood. So as we'll keep it between us and that ombre. Right. Now keep moving. Keep quiet while the masked man rides past. Got your gun ready? Yeah. Yeah, he's just money in front of the shaggy. Let's go get him. I'll go. You stay here and cover him. I savvy. Get your hands up, mister. You're along. I said, hush your hands. Don't try any fast moves. Because I'm not the only one who's holding a gun on you. My hands are up. Now lower one hand real slow and unbuckle your gun belt and let it drop. If you think because of this mask, I... know who you are, Lone Ranger. Oh, and who are you? I want you to know, I'll tell you. Do as I said, drop the gun belt. Very well. There. Now keep both hands high and move back. Stepping backward from the gun belt he had dropped to the ground, the Lone Ranger brushed the side of his horse and noticed that Silver was tense, eager to spring into action at a given word. That's far enough. Stand still. Come on, Jake. So your partner's name is Jake, huh? Well, so this is the famous Lone Ranger, huh? <laughs> he doesn't look so dangerous with his guns on the ground and his hands in the air. Is Toto inside that shack? Yeah, he's there. And you're going to join him. Now turn around. Face the other way and put your hands behind your back. Just one minute. Eh? The Lone Ranger knew he had no hope of overpowering the two gunmen unless he could divert their attention momentarily. And he knew he'd have to act at once. He looked past them in the direction of the shack, then smiled slowly, confidently. What are you looking at? You said Tonto was inside the shack. He is. Adam Silver! As both men involuntarily turned their heads, Silver lunged against Jake and knocked him off balance. The Lone Ranger leaped forward. You take it! He struck Steve's wrist a chopping blow with the side of his hand. Steve dropped his gun, then a fist crashed to his jaw. You? It was a knockout blow. Meanwhile, Jake, dodging to avoid Silver's lashing hoofs, brought his gun to bear on the stallion. But another gun spoke first. It was the gun that Steve had dropped. The Lone Ranger held it. You're through. You broke my arm. Lose your toe or I'll break your other arm. Now wait, listen, mister. I'm not ready to listen. Lie down on the ground beside your pal. You killed him. No, just knocked him out. Now lie on your stomach. Yeah. What are you going to do? First, I'll tie you and your partner. Put your hand behind your back. My, my right arm's broken. I'll move it for you. No, no. Stop no. your noise. Your arm's not broken. <laughs> Steve remained unconscious while the Lone Ranger tied the hands of both gunmen behind their backs. 
Then he lashed their feet together, buckled on his gun belt, and hurried into the shack. Lighting a candle, he quickly released his Indian friend. Tonto expressed his gratitude, then said, Then capture me near town, Kimasabi. Bring me here. Then turn Scout loose. Them hope bring you here. That's just what Scout did. Crook's plan. Kill us both. If they intended to kill us, why did they come this far from town? Them want death to look like accident. Then knock us out. Then start landslide. So that's it. Do you know why those men wanted to kill us? No. Do you know who they are? Me only know them call each other Jake, Steve. All right, we'll question them. Are you able to walk, Tonto? Uh, me all right now, Kimasabi. Good, let's go. Oh, uh, where are their horses? Then tie horses behind cabin, so you not see them. Listen, mister. You and the Indian may think you have the upper hand, but we doubt it. Why did you try to kill us? We're not talking. Were you acting for someone else? I said we're not talking. Kimasabi. Yes? Me use knife, me make them talk. So try to bluff us. We know all about you two. We know you're not going to kill us or torture us into squealing, don't we, Steve? That's right. You seem to be well informed. We are. This is one time, mister, when your principles have backfired. You can't make us talk. You can't prove we had any intention to hurt you. It's your word against ours. You take us to the law, we'll deny all you say. And we'll claim we mistook Tonto for an Indian who stole a horse from us. And held him to ask about it. That's right, and you can't prove we're lying. You're as smart as you're supposed to be. You'll realize there's nothing you can do except let us go. There is something I can do. I'm going to find out where you came from. You think you can make us talk? I'm not even going to try to make you talk. Otto, turn their horses loose. Ah, uh, me, Sammy. Hey, you gonna leave us stranded here without horses? I'm going to leave you here for the time being. What's the, what's the idea? Horses generally find their way back home. I think that's what yours will do. Now, wait. When I know where you came from, I may be able to learn who sent you. Knowing where we came from won't help you any? No. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're wrong. Horses on way, Kimasabi. All right, we'll follow them. Steady, soldier. Uh, we leave crooks here? Yes, they're well tied and they'll be safe. Unless there happens to be a landslide. Uh, a landslide? There might be one. Oh, I doubt it. Easy, steady. Easy, come, easy, fella. Come on, steady. Come on, come. The first light of dawn could be seen in the eastern sky when the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the horses of Jake and Steve onto the Bar M Ranch. Oh, oh, steady, oh, easy, 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 the horses are home, Tonto. Uh, you know who owned Bar M? Yes, a white-haired man on his pop medicine. He's been here for years. You speak to him? Yes, we'll see what he knows about Jake and Steve. Come into the house with me. Masked man and Tonto found the back door unlocked. Entering the big house, they moved quietly until they reached a bedroom. In the faint light coming through a window, they saw a man asleep. Light that candle, Tonto. Uh -huh. hmm. The sleeper's hair was snow white, but strangely disarranged. Tonto, he's wearing a wig. That's right. Tossing in his sleep, he moved it to the side of his head. Pull that candle close. Let's see what he looks like without the wig. Yeah. This close enough? Yes. Baldy Burley. Wake up, Baldy. What? Wake up, the law wants you. Mask. Not so fast. Otto, see if there's a gun beneath his pillow. Let me see. Let go, old range. That's right. I hear a gun. I thought that's what he was reaching for. It's the end of your trail, Baldy. Did what you what really is? expect Jake and Steve to murder us? Hey, those bunglers. You had a good hideout, Baldy. Now, I suspected that you and Pop Madison were the same man. You might have posed as a law-abiding rancher for the rest of your life if you hadn't trusted Jake and Steve. Those squealing double-crossers, they'll pay for this. I've got evidence in my strong box that'll hang them both. And the law has evidence that will hang you. Get dressed. We're taking you to the sheriff. I'll never be taken alive. You saw me get back. You. There's no use trying to break away. You're through. Now, stand up and get dressed, unless you want to be jailed in a nightshirt. That 
afternoon after a ride to Gray Mountain, a sheriff's posse returned to the jail with Jake and Steve in custody. Well, gents, I've got a cell all ready for you two. Sheriff, there's been a mistake. Steve and I didn't do anything there's wrong. There's no mistake. What's the charge against this? Murder. And we got the evidence from Baldy Burley. B- Baldy? And there he is, boys, in the cell across the corridor. <laughs> Baldy! Yes, it's me. And I don't intend to hang alone. I told you double-crossers I had evidence to hang you if you ever squealed on me. But we didn't squeal. We didn't tell that masked man a thing about you. That masked man has his own way of doing things and getting crooks. You sure made a big mistake when you tried to murder the Lone Ranger. I will still a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording at this same time.